Hi guys, welcome back to Astro Photography Quest. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to process the North American Nebula and Pixin site. Alright, without further ado, let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is obviously we're going to have to stretch the image. If you ever use Photoshop before, you'll know how to stretch an image in Photoshop, but of course, Pixin site has a little bit different of a process. In order to stretch an image in Pixin site, you go to Process, All Processes, and you go to something called Histogram Transformation. It's very similar to Photoshop levels, in a sense it is, but yet there's a few more steps you have to do. First of all, we'll have to select the view, which is this view right here. I don't know why the heck I named the file last, but uh, because of the last image I uh, added, the last image I stacked in Deep Sky Stacker. Um, but as you can see, this is going to take a while. The process, it's going to take a while because you have to go back and forth and back and forth to stretch your image. As you know, how you have to do that in Photoshop levels, you have to just keep stretching and stretching and stretching and stretching until you get some detail pulled out. But with this, I'm just going to undo all this. But with Pixinsight, what you can do instead is use something called STF Auto Stretch. Now, in order to auto stretch, first of all, click over here on these little two arrows next to this like computer liking icon that, with the X on it. And then... Click on this nuke button right here, the one with the computer, and it has like a little uh, nuke button, nuke symbol. Not the one with the up arrow, that's that's a little too much stretching. We're going to use this one. As you can see, we, this is just basically a preview of what you're going to get out of your data eventually. This is just a preview of the data that's actually in your image. Now, it doesn't work good for all images. I actually remember some of the images I used that were RGB, especially in light pollution, did not turn out very well with the auto stretch. So just know if you're using RGB, um, if you're doing RGB filters and you're in heavy light pollution, I would not recommend using the auto stretch, especially because it causes vignetting and doesn't look very good. It just sometimes overstretches and can't calculate correctly because light pollution. All right, so that's out of the way. So in order to actually apply this auto stretch, if you like this auto stretch, if we like this auto stretch, in order to actually apply it, what we're going to have to do is go to process, all processes, and we're going to have to go back to Instagram transformation, but we're also going to open the screen transfer function. The screen transfer function is basically the auto stretch tool. So there's a new icon to auto stretch it, but it, it contains the values for the auto stretch that we need to give the histogram transformation, which is the actual levels tool, kind of like that. So we need to give this the values. So we'll auto stretch it to get the values put in. And then we're going to drop in this little arrow symbol, this little triangle symbol. And then we're going to click apply. So we're going to apply that to the image. So now we have the values dropped in. We can apply that to the image. Now we're going to need to turn the preview off so we can just see the auto stretch. So now it's officially applied to our image. Now that we got that applied, as you can see, it is pretty noisy still. There's still a lot of noise in the image. I did not get RGB channels because I was too lazy to get up in the morning to uh, switch filters because I don't have electric photo wheels. So that kind of sucks. But all right, let's see. I first got to get rid of this noise. In order to get rid of noise, we're going to use something called the multi-scale linear transform. This is basically going to get rid of noise in certain levels of detail on certain levels of brightness. So first of all, I'm going to check noise reduction for the first one. I'm going to turn up the threshold a little, like 5,000. The amount's going to stay. It will, actually, we're going to turn it down to 90 a little bit. Let's see, you can turn it down to 0.90. And then we're going to go to the second layer, and we're going to turn on noise reduction for this one as well. And we're going to turn the threshold up to 3,500 is good, I think. And we're going to turn it down 0.75. For this one, we're going to do noise reduction as well. We're going to turn the threshold up to 3,000. And the noise reduction to 0.48 is fine, I guess. And the final one is going to be a threshold of, let's see, 2,000 is good. And then we're going to do... 0.30. Okay, so now we're going to also check the ringing to make sure the stars are not ha have dark halos around them. Now we'll apply this to the image and see what it does. Now this will take a second. I don't know how long exactly it's going to take. Okay, it looks like it's done. Let's see the difference. Undo, redo, undo, redo. As you can see, it didn't make a huge difference. So if this doesn't make a huge difference for you, what you can do instead, an easier way, is to go to process all process ACDNR. It'll automatically do this for you. You can apply the amount of noise reduction you want. I'm just going to use 1.0, and uh, I'm just going to apply this with ACDNR just so it's easy. Especially if you're a beginner, you'd probably want to use ACDNR over the other one. 
but that's more of like an advanced technique I'm still learning myself. So as you see now, it's a lot better in terms of noise. As you see, if we undo that, let's see, undo, much more noise, redo, a lot less noise. Undo, redo, undo, redo. Yeah, as you can see, there's a lot less noise in it. Now I like to do something called deconvolution. Basically what this is, it'll sharpen it up, or if you have like egg-shaped stars, and currently I don't think I have these in the, this image. I'm gonna zoom in here to find out. I don't think I did, it looked earlier. Yeah, not really. So if you have egg-shaped stars, egg -shaped stars, you can use the motion blur PSF and then adjust the length to match your stars, but currently we're not gonna do that because that's not the whole point of this video. Okay, so in deconvolution, I'm going to make sure de-ringing is checked because I've noticed when every time I do de-ringing, um, or every time I don't do de-ringing with deconvolution, there's always like dark halos around the star, so you don't want that. Okay, so now I'm going, this is, the, this is exactly what I was talking about, wavelets, like sharpening. So that's basically what this does. We're going to apply that, and we're going to do 10 iterations. I usually like to do 10. And this is going to take a while, so I'm going to pause the video and come right back. So here's the difference. Here's undo. So this is without deconvolution and redo. It says just a slight difference, but as you can see, if we zoom in here and redo that. As you can see, that's sharper. That's blurrier, and this is sharper. Okay, there we go. So another feature I like to use in PixInsight, we have an automatic background extractor. This is good, especially if you have like a bright background with light pollution. So I'm going to do a subtraction here. This is another good feature of PixInsight. As you can see now, what happened is we had a lot of, um, let's see here. We had a lot of extra stuff we didn't need and as you can see we have we got rid of some of that amp glow that we didn't need in the background so that looks much better so that's basically a simple tutorial of PixInsight and that, that kind of explains some of the workflow hopefully for you guys and if you like my content please subscribe and if you like this video please leave it a thumbs up anyway until next time clear skies